Saint Longinus. Let's take a closer look at his lance. It is shaped like a leaf, but like the real lance, maybe. How can I be sure? I think this statue does represent Longinus, armed with a lance that wounded Jesus. The Holy Lance. How can I find out if this is an exact representation? There's no way of being certain of it. No, this is too easy. Mortimer's trying to throw me off the track again. It seems too visible to be true. Impossible not to see the statue on first glance, given its size. And Mortimer has no interest in making the shape of the true lance so easy to see. Hey, looks like there's a symbol engraved on the tip. Yes, a fish. The Christian fish, no doubt. It can't be a coincidence. It, it must have been done on purpose. Huh, good thing I took a closer look. Adoration of the Shepherds with Saints Longinus and John, Giulio Romano, 1534. Longinus is holding the Holy Lance in his left hand, and I'll bet he's holding the sponge soaked in holy blood in the other hand. Yes! Here we can see that the Holy Lance is represented in the shape of a spear. I'd better make sure I check this twice. It's, it's a work that dates from the Renaissance. And there's nothing to say that it's not based on erroneous elements. But I believe what I read in the letter from Milan addressed to Mortimer. There's every reason to believe that this painting has been modified according to his guidelines to represent the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. This work is an order from Lord Mortimer. All the details have been conceived with a specific goal in mind. Upon closer examination, you can see that even the style clashes with that of most of the other works in the manor. No, if Mortimer has taken special care as the conception and the exhibition of this painting in his study, in the same way as for the nightmare painting, it must be of some significance. And that is indeed the true shape of the Holy Lance, a spear shape. There's only one way of being sure. I'll have to find other clues that will confirm this information. Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself.
Let's have a look at his personal papers. Of course, it's in Latin, the language of the church. All those hours of learning Latin declensions are gonna pay off in the end. Mother will be proud. Now this could be interesting. Let's say a sancte, various representation criteria, of which are shown the most common throughout the centuries, and in different forms. If Piaggi's notes are anything to go by, the weapon I'm looking for is shaped like a tapered spear. Well, that should help me identify it. The Cardinal's not in his room. I bet he went back to stuffing himself. Fragment of amber. I can see that this lance has the characteristic shape of a spear. It is made of iron, and its tip is engraved with a cross. I can see that this lance has a so-called leaf shape. It is made entirely of iron. I can see that the tip is engraved with the symbol of the sun. The sarcophagus is engraved with the name of Clemens III. Good God! The one whose cross allowed me to enter. This sarcophagus is beautifully made, but ancient. Stone is marked by the passage of time, but it's really well preserved. This one has no name. I wonder who it was for.
I can see that this spear has a, a so-called leaf shape, but is copper rimmed. I can see the tip is engraved with the symbol of the Eye of Ra. Flavius Aetius. Hmm. It was cut a long time ago. You could tell by the rough hacks of the tool and the patina of the stone. This sarcophagus is very ancient. I'd say it's several centuries old. Well, here we can see this lance has a leaf shape is gold rimmed, and a fish is engraved on the tip. This lance has got a blade in the shape of a spear. Its blade is in iron or steel, I think. I can make out a rising sun engraved on the tip, The sarcophagus has been ravaged by time. It's sort of ageless, I guess. It's entirely sculpted. Well, we can see that this lance has a particular spear shape. It is coated in gold. You can distinguish the symbol of the fish engraved on the tip, barely noticeable. We can see that this lance has a leaf shape, and, well, it's in gold. I can see that a crucifix is engraved on the tip, just barely visible. Let's take a look at this lance here. It has a very special leaf shape. It is copper rimmed and I can see a fish symbol engraved on the tip. I can see that this lance has the shape of a boar spear. The blade is partially coated in copper, and I can just make out the symbol of the Eye of Ra engraved on the tip. I can see this lance has a spear shape, 
It is copper rimmed, and it has been engraved with the symbol of the Christian fish on the tip. This lance has a leaf shape. It is copper rimmed. The symbol of the Christian fish is engraved on the tip. I can see that this lance has a so-called leaf shape. It is clearly made of iron, and I can make out a sun engraved on the tip. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, uh, it's far too heavy. I'm not going to be able to do it on my own. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. Let's see what we can find here. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. What about this lance? It's got a spear shape, and the blade is partly made of copper. A barely visible crucifix is engraved on the blade. The sarcophagus of Lord Mortimer. It's the only sarcophagus in this crypt which appears to bear the Mortimer family name. What ancestor can it be? There's no inscription. Let's see what we can find here. Ha! Huh. Great! Now let's see what's inside. must be sure of my choice. I cannot get it wrong. Am I absolutely sure this is the one to take?
I'm already pressed for time as it is. Mother's waiting for me on the wharf. <laughs> 